<laughs> well, it's early morning at Nebard's telling. Haven't altered very much. One or two subtle changes. I won't tell you what they are, but while you're looking across there, I'm sure you better sell one of the major ones. And uh, no prizes, but uh, if you spot it and want to put it in the comments, that's fine. It sticks out like a sore thumb in some ways, but um, <laughs> there you go. Now, today, there's not just one unboxing, I'm going to be doing two. But you'll see this morning, and it's early in the morning now, this morning that um, we've got a bubble car, a class 121 this time, sitting in the bay, ready to operate the branch trains. And there's Nevard's telling station, sitting quietly in the morning light, waiting for some of the day's proceedings to commence. But we'll get on with the unboxing first and then get on to the running, okay? Now, today, <laughs> I want to talk parcels. Those of you who are railway enthusiasts will remember the Great Western Railway's rail cars, which they called Flying Bananas. And the Western, Great Western Railway had a number of those built as express parcel wagons. Well, in BR days, they decided they would try a similar thing. And in 1955, Craven started building three units. They didn't actually last very long. They, they went pretty early. Um, but between sort of 1956 and 1959 ish, along came 10. And here we are. And these were built by. Oh, yeah, I've got to try and get this right. We've lost the carriage and wagon company. I say there were ten of these, six for the western region and four for the Midland, although later almost all of the western region ones were transferred to the Midland. They lasted a bit longer. The last one was finally pensioned off in 1990. Um, sadly, none survived in preservation. There you go. Just going to do the usual. And I can see that in the camera. I don't find it very easy. There we go. The 8900 number series. Buster Carriage and Wagon Class 128 Diesel Parcel Unit. There we go. Uh, now, oh yeah, I almost forget. You can't say they're not well packed these days, I have to admit. There we go. Now, I'm not quite sure. These are funny, funny things because they've got these. Yes, that should have come down over that, I think, oh, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let us get the fending beast out and bring it up to the camera for you. This one actually represents one of the later conversions. They weren't all built with the corridor connections for... Uh, multiple unit running. And one or two of these were painted into post office red in later years. Sorry I moved it a bit then. But this is how they originally came. This is a western region one. As you know my layout is a bit western region biased. As usual with Helgen, a very hefty piece of kit. But as you can see, some lovely detail on there. Absolutely perfect. Look at these details on the on there. All that remains for me to do 
is to get it running for you. But not just yet. Now, I think almost all of us can remember the old British Railways, the travelling post offices, where the mail was sorted while the train was going along between the major cities, usually London and the West and the North and Scotland and places like that. Well, that sort of came to an end, although after having said they were finishing all mail contracts, I think British Rail must have decided that perhaps to some extent using rail was cheaper than, than going by road. Um, and so they started running a few more loco hauled rail, uh, um, mail trains. They also bought a complete fleet of class 325 electric units specifically for carrying mail. I'm very sad to say that from October this year the fleet is being got rid of. And you know one of the reasons why? It's no longer viable, now, this is going to get you, considering how the country is going, it's no longer viable to use electric traction. It's too expensive. The charges have gone up so much. And so it looks like Royal Mail is going to send all its stuff, again, by road. I, I, I don't... I just don't get it. I really don't get it. But anyway, I felt I needed to pay homage to the Royal Mail. Hornby some years ago did an operating Royal Mail coach set where you set a little bit of track up and as the train come along the, the, the track opened and it caught the mail bag in it and on the other side it threw a mail bag out. Unfortunately those don't work with modern track uh, and nobody at the moment is actually offering an operating Royal Mail set but it doesn't really matter because sometimes you would find that there'd be a, um, a travelling post office sorted van uh, in a if you like, a parcels train or something like that, uh, which would then be attached, so far as I've been able to tell, um, to a proper mail train at various parts of the country as it moved north or south or wherever it was going. Um, I've also ordered a bespoke Class 40 model, which will be representing the, uh, the diesel locomotive that was hauling the train involved in the great train robbery and that would have had in it a vehicle just like this. This is hot off the press by the way from Bachman. It arrived at my um, my model railway suppliers on Thursday, uh, no, no, Friday I think it was and I got it on Sunday. Royal Mail delivered on Sunday. As you can see and I won't tell you the cost because Looking at it now, I honestly think that the cost is way too much. I would value this at probably £20 less than I had to pay for it. However, having said that, as you can see, the chassis is, is plastic. There's no metal in it at all. It's very lightweight, very scant on detail. I'm very disappointed with that aspect of it. However, when you look at the top, there you are. You've got all the transfers, shows you quite clearly that it's, it's a Western Region one. Just trying to get it in front of the camera like that. But on this side is where the work has gone in. The detailed mesh from the catching unit. And this side presumably is where they open the door and, and, and hang the thing out to, um, to be caught on the line side. So yes, there is some... There is some detail here, but is it worth the money? I honestly don't think so. I think, Barkman, you need to think seriously before you start charging huge amounts for things that are literally all plastic and there's no, there's no intricate detail, nothing nice on here at all. And look at the wheels. They even look well, it feels as though they are plastic. No, that's not right. We should at least have metal wheels. Anyway, all we can do is to put it on the train consist and uh, we'll see what happens. You want to see the things running? We'll get them running.
Now here we are, it's early morning on a long summer's day. Bit of activity on the station at the moment. You'll see the parcel unit is sitting in the platform having done its work and is now ready for departure. This is not a DCC uh, controlled unit so there's no bells and whistles or anything but as you'll see when it goes round it's got quite a comforting sound, almost like a diesel purr. Um, the parcel train, the Royal Mail post office travelling van, is tucked at the end of the morning mail and parcels train. Mail, milk and parcels. Uh, and that will be hauled today by a Class 47, which is DCC. So let's get the, um, the parcels unit going. You'll see it's very responsive and very smooth running. steady speed, maybe a fraction slower. <coughs> In the meantime, we'll fire up the 47. I'm afraid basically this is take two, following a series of small hiccups. Never work with children, animals and model railways. But anyway, as I was saying, we'll get this parcels unit working and you'll see it's a very smooth running. And although it's not DCC, it does have quite a comforting motor sound, almost, almost dieselish. And I'm just going to leave it just pondering around slowly while the travelling post office van is at the end of the morning milk, paper and parcels train heading up towards Oxford and the TPO van will be attached to a northbound post office uh, whole post office train at a later time. It's actually travelling empty this morning. I haven't been up to London. Anyway, enough of that. It's all today by class 47, so we'll get her fired up. And this is DCC.
I will bring the um, bring this to a halt. We'll shut down the 47. Okay, take three. <laughs> we'll set this going again. I'll stick your warts and all in this time so you can see that model railways is not all plain sailing, especially when you're working with second hand track. Hopefully I will find when I put the track down permanently, I've got a complete new loop of brand new track for the DC Seaside and I'll be able to select the very best condition track for the non DC side. At the moment it's a bit of a lottery. Right, let's try the 47 again. Never run the 47 too fast. And I stopped it. It took me off the signal. I wish it was the raw metal there. What it's doing is now propelling. So I'm going to propel it into the station and stop it <laughs> because I don't think I'm going to have much success today. So let's wind this down. There we go. We'll just stick it in a little bit further. There we go. That's it. And now we've got the whole thing down. It's not working a hundred percent, but do these things ever. They never work when you want them to. But anyway, warts and all, 
you've seen basically what I've got there. <laughs> it hasn't worked out as I wanted it to, sorry about that, but there you go. These things happen, don't they? We'll see you next time.